Welcome to the Index Podcast, hosted by Alex Kahaya. Plug in as we explore new frontiers with Web3 and the decentralized future. Hey, everyone, and welcome to The Index, brought to you by The Graph, where we talk with the entrepreneurs building the next wave of the internet. I'm your host, Alex Kahaya, and in today's episode of The Index, I'm thrilled to welcome Nicholas Kakalis and Cheng Zhao, the co-founders of Pi Network, the first digital currency that can be mined on your phone. We will learn all about how Pi differs from other crypto projects, their approach, and the utility that they're building. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us, Alex. Thanks, Alex. So I would just first love to learn more about you guys. Like, how did you meet? How did you get the idea for Pi? Like, what is the genesis story for in, in your backgrounds? Pi Network is a combination of our academic and also personal interests. Nicholas and I got to know each other a long time before we built Pi. So he is always a hardcore computer scientist from hardware to theory or distributed system, which is a precursor to blockchain and uh, later human computer interaction. I am a social scientist. During my second half of my PhD at Stanford, I also got interested into human computer interaction. So that's where Nicholas and I collaborated many years on multiple projects in social computing, crowdsourcing, building large scale systems, design systems for scaling human communication and productivity. We wrote a few papers together and then we both are interested in entrepreneurship. So we combine all this interest together. Pi combines all these interests uh, I mentioned above. And uh, to solve um, human interaction, facilitate large scale participation and collaboration to create something larger than, you know, just the people combined collectively. And then we think blockchain is a very powerful technology to facilitate that. And we look into the solution in that space. And actually, Nicholas was even teaching a class on decentralized applications on blockchain. And through that experience, we discover you know, certain issues of the industry at the time. Especially through that experience, we were very frustrated with the current limitations and implementations of the crypto industry at the moment. We initially tried fixing the user experience problems that some other platforms had. Soon we realized that uh, without actually building our own platform, we would not be able to create a truly decentralized and truly accessible cryptocurrency for people to use. So that's because fundamentally people would not have been able to mine it themselves without upfront financial costs. We ended up designing a Pi to address all these uh, issues and we aim to have it have accessibility, inclusivity and wide distribution on a large social network that recognizes Pi and this way allows true utility to emerge. Really interesting, and, and it's all done on the phone. One of the things you guys are trying to accomplish is just lowering the barrier and to make it more accessible. And I think that's been the holy grail of crypto for a while. Like I remember I got back in this space in 2016 and that was the narrative then, and it's still the narrative now. You know, It's still a work in progress. There's like a lot to be done, but I'm just genuinely curious to learn more about your approach to solving that problem. Let's go a layer deeper and talk through what, the, what it actually looks like, what Pi does, and how it brings that user experience problem and accessibility problem, you know, fixes that. Yeah, accessibility has multiple aspects. There is the financial barrier, there is knowledge barrier, there is also the easy to use or, you know, the technical logistic barriers. So in order to achieve true accessibility, you need to solve all these barriers in order to break down all the barriers and have a free flow of user experience. And that's what Pi trying to address those issues. So specifically, you know, have a phone that is accessible. Almost these days, everyone can have a phone. And also accessibility is about equal opportunity. So it's free. Everyone can go, just go to the app store and download. And then, you know, easy to understand, meaning that people don't have to have a CS degree in order to know how to run a node to mine, but they can use a phone and an app and building the user experience easy enough for them to follow. The education of uh, the whole process of what is mining, how you can mine, this is also important. I would love to dig deeper into the consensus or just how that works. 
from a mining perspective, that is definitely one of the biggest things, like especially for early adopters that you miss out on. You know, if you're not highly skilled DevOps engineer, in most cases, you cannot participate at that level in the earliest days. And a lot of that has to do with the software, right? The validator software and how complex the the algorithms are or whatever to, to validate and to set up that validator. So wh- how does it work in your system? Like, it sounds like you get set up really easily, but like under the hood, I'm curious to learn more about that. The essence is a different type of consensus algorithm, right? In terms of how it works, if you compare it to Bitcoin, everyone knows Bitcoin use proof of work. Let's compare it to Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin, Pi is also running on its own blockchain. So it's a layer one solution. We are not running on other people's blockchain. Unlike Bitcoin, we use different type of consensus algorithm. Bitcoin uses proof of work. The requirement for that consensus to run is contributors or miners contributing energy and electricity. And in return, they receive Bitcoin rewards. In Pi's case, we use federated by sending agreements. In Pi's specific blockchain, it actually relies on a trust graph. The trust graph is an essential component feed into the blockchain for it to reach consensus. So the mobile miners are actually contributing to this trust graph that the blockchain will use in order to secure the ledger. So each miner, each mobile miner actually are contributing by their trust circles. We call it security circles, which is uh, they appointing three to five people they trust. And in aggregate, millions of people's uh, trust circles forms this trust graph that will be used by the blockchain and to scale. So the mining in analogy is Pi's consensus algorithm requires the trust graph and contributors or miners contributing the, to the trust graph in return receive Pi rewards. This is the fundamental reason why Pi mining doesn't consume the level of energy required by traditional mining of cryptocurrency. At the same time, it's also allowing mobile miners to contribute to the blockchain without getting, you know, with obstruction also from the complications of the technical aspect of blockchain. So I have five friends and I onboard them to the Pi network as part of my trust graph. I like send them the link to the app. They like they download the app and they hit the button to run to contribute resources. How is the trust verified? I guess another way to ask is like, how would you game the system and how do you prevent that? Right? So what does trust actually mean and how do you at a scale, I kind of see it already, right? Like if everyone's trust circle is 30 people, that's still not big enough to be like the billions of people they can't possibly collude to corrupt the chain. I'm trying to wrap my head around like what are the risks and trade-offs and like how does it actually work? And how does the trust actually work? Yeah, I can try to explain intuitively how this works. First of all, I want to clarify that the blockchain consensus algorithm is running on computer nodes and we have tens of thousands of these computer nodes already or even just on our testnet so comparing the testnet of uh, pi with uh, other mainnets is a few or maybe orders of magnitude even bigger subscribe to our pi whales youtube channel and earn pi rewards